Hi, this is Chris over at 3D Palace. Welcome to this recording session where I'm going to be making end-to-end -end a weapon. Um, this is going to be around about a five or six hour tutorial set doing the end-to-end -end build of this weapon. Hopefully later we're going to bung it into this real-time renderer I've been playing with and there's going to be a couple of different versions of this. There's going to be one for sponsor members and there's going to be one for free members and there's going to be one on the front of a magazine and you can even buy it and send me money if you want. <coughs> anyway, uh, enough talking, time to get to work. Now, here I have the perspective window. I'm going to be working in that pretty much all the time. I'm going to be using my trackball mouse and occasionally using a Wacom pen and tablet, kind of depending on how I feel. Now, the design I've got for the weapon is a mixture of several different genres that I quite like the look of. So, um, simplest thing to do then is I'm going to start with a box. And there's no size measurements or anything like that in this. Is the box here. Uh, I'm going to give it a name just for the moment and this is going to be handle and now we've got more than enough to start with. So I'm going to right click convert to editable polygon and in the middle here I'm just going to do a connect chamfer that up like so. Um, I'm going to do probably quite a bit of uh, scaling but if I do and if uh, I'm only scaling on a couple of axes then it's important to mash the reset X form button you can do it now or later and at the minute all I'm interested in is getting the basic shape together after I've got the basic shape then I'm going to start looking at ways of kind of adding interest and detail to the model I'll bridge there Okay, now I'm going to take these three here. And at the minute I'm just basically trying to get the handle of the weapon together. Once I've got that, I can start working on additional parts as they come along. This is, as much as anything, kind of a pure polymodeling exercise. We might mess around with some modifiers but are very much doubted and it's quite early in the morning so don't expect me to make too much sense until the caffeine's kicked in which will be several hours down the line okay that's a fair start we don't want loads and loads of really um, symmetric kind of symmetrical shapes that's not what we're going for here we want a shape that's going to be interesting as possible So all I'm doing is just slowly going over it, changing parts as I come to them. Building a more comfortable shape, like so. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just scale this part in a little bit. I haven't quite got all the verts that I wanted here. So, like that. And I'm going to move this in just a little bit. Like so. Okay, don't worry about rough shapes. We're going to flesh this out as we go along. Next, over here. I'm going to take these three, just shift and drag, clone them to an object. This is going to become it's the main chamber. And I'm going to flip that. And this is just going to allow me to kind of come up with the size that I need for this. So around about, let's see, probably to about there. And just cap off the end. Now if I'm capping off the end, I should probably just bridge here first. And then just cap those two like that. Okay, as you can see, this isn't the most complicated gun in the world at the moment, but we're going to be refining the shape as we come down to it. 
and now over here uh, just clone to object and this would be barrel flip this Okay, and work on the scale and size of this part. And again, as with the previous piece, to the bridge, and then Control A, and as cap. Alright, that gives us a starting point, these three points here. So from this, we're going to start the overall process of refining this. So let's start here. And what I'm going to do, just bring this down here. Now this is my graphite modeling tool set. Um, some of these are actually really quite useful. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swift loop, and swift loop just allows me to draw loops in on my model anywhere I want and previews it in real time. So I'm going to click here and here. Just knock, knock myself into front view there. And now it's just a case of moving these. and just lining this up the way that I wanted to be roundabout like that okay perspective zoom now down the middle here I'm just going to do a quick uh, ring and a connect chamfer this wide So, and then off this, I just connect here. I'm going to do a quick detach, and I'm just coming up with kind of names for these pieces as I do it, just so they've got some form of naming convention on them. Okay, and I'm going to extrude these by zero. Bring them straight out like this, and just use the scale tool, scale them flat. Because what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going to the front of the weapon, and then from this, I'm going to start really working on chamfering the detail in. Okay, now here, not chamfering, you know, modeling the detail in. hide this for a moment and that will allow me just to fill this part here in unhide all ok nice blocky barrel piece there now then I'm going to work on cylinder, just auto grid it. Make it twenty two sides. And now uh, this is just loose bevelling. <coughs> so Again, just going to get my bevel tool on.
trying to get these uh, bevel heights right. I really got a suspicion I'm going to have to clean my mouse ball, which is a lot just as funny as it sounds actually. Answer the question that has just appeared in IRC, I most assuredly do. Okay, and this element here. Now then, if I want to add some recess detail into this, rather than kind of messing about, um, kind of making cuts in this and extruding back and all this kind of thing, what I can do is just build single box here and I'm going to reset it reset recess it inwards like that convert to edible poly and then from that what I'm going to do is just control A and flip everything take its top here get rid of it a lot of the time I'm going to create detail and then I'm just going to delete them anyway so clone to object clone to element element there we are and now if I just shift and drag and move those over there move this a little bit more to the left I think the main group of people who are watching at the moment live on Palace are probably suffering from coffee, coffee withdrawals so I'm sure there'll be some comments sooner rather than later there certainly was one about the mouse ball ok now over here I want to bridge this and the best way to bridge this is well cap this and the best way to cap this is to bridge it first Like so. Once I've done that, I'm going to throw this up and cap it. Am I still in bridge mode? I bet I am. There we are, cap. Okay, check that. That's our first level of minor detail added very minor. Now we're going to go back from here. Um, I have no idea to be quite honest. Large pedestal mounted weapon to the person who just asked what scale is this gun? Probably large pedestal weapon based. Okay, I'm going to ring this, do a connect. and it's working symmetry for the moment so just uh, go down the modifier stack till I find symmetry and turn it on like so pin stack show end result And from this I'm going to start breaking up a bit more. There's no rush because I've only been doing this for 20 minutes so far. 
And I've got this feeling I'm going to be doing it probably for quite a bit longer than that. get into that coffee machine. Now then, important tool. Back scratcher. this up just a teeny bit here start messing around with shapes as we come into them and ring here do a quick connect Okay, now down here in this wonky looking mofo. You know, I've still got no idea what a Mountain Dew is. That's just to uh, Lee, who's mentioning you need some Mountain Dew. Is that some sort of cola derivative or something? Uh, I'll be building the power source later. The power source for this, to the person who just asked, will probably be some sort of a wired in battery pack. Or maybe, you know. Hamsters running in a wheel, who knows? Okay, could I try and loop this? I've got to loop the inside and the outside. Well, I should have ringed it really. Including bringing the inside. Do a connect. Top down view. Well, uh, you know, again, there's a discussion going on in IRC. How's it going to be powered? Uh, it's science fiction. We can only assume some sort of delicious edible battery supply the size of a small mouse. Again, I'm going to throw some symmetry on this. That's a good thing about sci-fi. It only has to make visual sense rather than actual rational sense a lot of the time. Turn on end result. Let's move this down about here. And cylinder. Vertebral poly. And start moving this into the right position too. A lot of this is about ergonomic mixing of shapes, making things work together. It's kind of a big progression from the olden days of 3D Palace with Dreadnought 1 or Wonky Troll or all the other funny tutorials that we made back then because I didn't know any better. So what we're doing is adding a curved surface to this, just so that 
we can basically hide some of the detail inside it. There we go, and I've attached this piece on. Like that. Now I can isolate my selection, which will allow me to just work on this part if I need to. I'll just turn off select by polygon first then, otherwise it won't let me. There we are. I don't worry that these aren't fitting together yet. Simple use of the scale tool will fix that. Incidentally, if you're wondering why I sound like I've got some sort of a expensive addiction going on, it's just I have this cold that refuses to go away. So I'm going to be sneezing and making you deaf at least twice during this tutorial set. So that's something for you to look forward to. So again, using the scale just on one axis just to straighten this up. And then bring this in nice and flat here. Because we need to combine straight and curved edges. Reason being, if we combine the straight and the curved edges, then we get a much more pleasing shape that's going to work. Otherwise, it won't. Ring, connect. Most of the time, I'm just using the default connect values as well. There we go, just in there. Just make sure they overlap in the middle there. Just having a quick look inside the model. It gives me a chance to make sure it hasn't ruined it in any way. Surprisingly easily easy to ruin a model without realising it. Just making sure everything lines up. I'm quite retentive when it comes to making sure things line up, so Same for the inside here. What a mad itchy eyeball going on. And people who are saying, oh, we came to watch and have woken up at four in the morning and are going, why did we wake up at four o'clock in the morning? What were we thinking of? You know, you could be watching a movie or something. Target World. Oh, uh, you missed the nudity. Sorry, Frank. Uh, Fred, rather. There was loads of it. Okay, make sure these parts all line up. I'll give you a clue. It's lots and lots of me lining up verts. Okay, that seems fine. bridge some of these. And then I can cap in these.
has been told it's not even four o'clock in some parts of America in the morning. Can you imagine that? That's terrible. I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. There we go. And again, back. And that just gives us that nice shape there. Exit isolation mode. Okay, and I'm going to loop this again. And just cap it. Now normally I wouldn't go for this whole kind of method I'm using here, however. I'm going to an in now you notice I can't cap it by the way, simply because I've got symmetry in place, so I'll uh, isolate the selection again. Yeah, I wouldn't normally just jive polygons straight inside other polygons like this, is what I'm trying to say to you. However, sometimes you're going to have to. Now then, you see this uh, interesting mass of polys just here. That means I've dragged something that I probably shouldn't have dragged when I did that. Lip move just here. Let's have a look. Yep, there it is there, look. You know what? I don't really care. What I'll do is I'll just clean these uh, excess polygons out later on, because they only seem to be affecting the inside, really. There we go, do a quick clean. Good old scruffy housekeeping skills. Wow, there's loads of them, look. Thankfully they all vanish just as quickly. So everyone's all talking about Hypershot now, this uh, real-time renderer I've been messing around with, which is a bloody good real-time renderer, incidentally. Control A, just do a quick fast weld. I must admit, I have been enjoying playing with that. It's uh, ridiculously good. Okay, exit isolation mode. The thing is, Hypershot's only going to be any good if you've got a good model to put into it, which I think is kind of obvious. So. I can still feel a sneeze coming. <coughs> <sighs> yep, sneezed. Didn't even bother pausing. Some poor person's going to watch this video tutorial and go deaf. Okay, yeah, let's look at the shapes I've got over here. I know, I do try and sneeze at least once in every video. It's my mission to try and make people as deaf as I possibly can. Sometimes I actually start speaking really quietly just before I sneeze, just so that people will turn the volume up. Especially good if they're wearing headphones. I think I'm probably going to save every hour. I'm not sure exactly what time I started this now. Should really have looked at the clock. Yeah, this definitely looks better coming off the bottom there. I'll just cap that. And then I can work in bevel. Bring into that. To that. There we go. 30 minutes I've been told apparently. 
Oh yeah, exactly 30 minutes according to my st statistics here. That's cool. Okay, so we've developed our first part of this barrel to come into here. And I want to actually link these two parts here together. So I'm probably going to use this main chamber for it. Still not 100% on that barrel over here. So I might just wipe it out and do that again in a minute. Alright, let's have a look over here. Let's keep that to there. So it comes all the way out from this kind of fish shaped thing at the back here. This handle's too thick. Okay, starting to get some shape here that's working. Let's have a look up here on the front. Don't like that. That's gay. That's horrible. If you can't critique yourself, who can you critique? <laughs> no, there's an obvious answer to that the French. But not the French Canadians. Fine people to a man. And suddenly 3D Palace DVD sales in France went through the floor. Well, I had already, actually. I do believe the French actually have their own video tutorial authors that actually speak the lingo over there. And a uh, very good morning to SB, who's just turned up in 3D Palace IRC. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere with this shape now over here. This is where we start to kind of drag out shapes that don't appear to make any sense, but relate to the power unit. So I'm going to drag them from here. And for this... Start with a box. I'm not even going to name it because it's going to be linked in with the rest of this soon enough. Let's go straight into bevel mode. You can add a lot of details in bevel mode before you even need to start kind of thrashing the detail out later on. Probably going to be big enough. I'll go in here. The idea is to make this more like a cartridge than anything, so it's kind of sl looks like it slams in. I'm actually bevelling a little bit too fast here, so I'm losing detail that I should otherwise have. There we go. <coughs> Alright, that shape works. Turn angle snap on. Now I'm going to start putting additional detail parts into this, so I'm going to do a connect. Well, no I'm not, I'm going to do a loop first actually, otherwise I've got nothing to connect to. Ring. 
Where's my lovely coffee when I need it? Slide. And just click OK. Now I'm doing extrude. I'm going to extrude this in. Reduce the extrusion base width. You see, I can use this later on as well, which is nice. But if I've, once I've set it up once, basically I can keep using it again. Macro economics. Someone's doing an exam in four hours, and they're actually sitting here watching me doing this. You can explain this to your tutor, okay? And then click OK, and then a quick chamfer. Then increase the amount of segments or decrease them, depending. I was wondering what economics was. Economics. Dear me. Okay, so that's one in place just here. Okay, so that's a thin detail part. We can do it again over here. Do connect. But this time change the slide to a positive value. Click OK. And then it's just a case of doing the extrude on it again. I think I'll change the base width because it seems a little bit wide. And then the chamfer. There we go, like that. Very useful little tool this actually, because now if I do a quick insert like this, control select by edge, so I've got these parts here, then do an extrude in, and then a chamfer, it creates that shape there. Right, so we've got a simple shape there. Um, I'll probably put this in on the back as well. I want it basically to look like, you know, you could slot some ammo into it or something. Control select by edge. Extrude the edge. Chamfer the edge. Okay, I mean, we're going to be using good old uh, edge checks probably later on to an incredible degree, so... Okay. Now, I'm going to rotate this. Two copies. There, there, and there. Just try and get them lined up slightly nicely. Okay, and attach them together. Next, delete these inside faces. You don't want to know what they're talking about in IRC at the moment, though I'll just point out a traditional 3D Palace style conversation. Just bridge these across. Take the entire piece in a little bit and up a little bit. Oops, wrong part. Uh, did it again. Let's check this is going to fit into the place that I need it to. Okay, back over to here.
How would this weapon compete with the Vickers? Hmm, well, this is just a mass of made-up polygons, whereas Vickers is, of course, a fine, noble British gun, made of hard-working steel, from our former steel places that we used to make steel out of. So I'm willing to bet it probably wouldn't do very well at all. Okay. Now into here. Damn fine gun, the Vickers gun, actually. No, it doesn't look cool at the minute, Lee. Give it time. If I don't get horribly frustrated, throw it away and just do a robot instead, of course. It is. Of course, you can't go wrong with a good, honest robot. Ah, God, I've got s circular selection on. How did that happen? There we go. I don't normally do line-up modelling, however, it does have its uses sometimes, and this is kind of one of them. And if I was spending a lot longer working on this, then I'd almost certainly not be using this method at all. getting these shapes kind of lining up the way I want them. I always find it somewhat like trying to do a jigsaw mentally with bendy pieces made of rubber with no actual um, lugs on them doing this. Which is of course the best way to do a jigsaw. If you've never drunkenly done a jigsaw at two o'clock in the morning using a pair of scissors to make the pieces fit then you've never lived. to there. Quick bridge. There to there. Another quick bridge. Pull back. Starting to get there. Whilst we can cover a lot of this with superfluous detail, it's best in the long run to try and be tidy. I know it doesn't come naturally to a lot of 3D artists. Rubik's Cube Junk. Someone just suggested playing Rubik's Cube Junk. That is a fantastic thing to do. Because you can win every time. Because, you know, Rubik's Cube versus Hammer. No, no, he just suggested taking the stickers off. That's not the way you do it. Rubik's Cube versus a Hammer. The Rubik's Cube always loses. This also works for video games. Okay, attach that. Good, starting to get there. 
Uh, what else do we have to put in? It's amazing, I've already changed the design completely from what I was working on as a concept. So, isn't that great? Yeah, I don't put them on my screen, they're too distracting. No, 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 I've drawn them out. Lee came up with kind of a basic idea that I quite liked the other day. And then from that, I also drew my own in Photoshop yesterday. And, uh... Ah, oh, it wasn't that bad. And, um... Then I've been kind of working at looking around on websites, borrowing ideas. That's the technical term we use, borrowing ideas. And uh, I found something, you know, I kind of came up with a sketch that I quite liked. There we go. It's kind of tricky, really, because with guns, you've got a whole new way of trying to think, with weapons, rather. Because you've got to think, well, what's the purpose of it? Well, obviously, it's to reduce the enemy to comedy-sized, bite-sized pieces. And then you've got to think, well, you know, how is it going to achieve that? Once you've started getting that kind of way of thinking sorted out, it actually comes together fairly well. Right, now, when you do this, where you've done an inset, one extrude, like this, to put it back together again, the best way of doing it is, if you just grab these parts here, make a quick connect, target weld these parts to this part, so watch, that'll fill the gaps, like that and then you can use the interactive bridging tool and just go in there like this and now you can move this around without breaking any polygons frozen kitten ammunition, I love that and panda hearts <sighs> it says something about the 3D Palace membership really bless them can you champ for this? Remember, we've got curved shapes and straight shapes mixing together, so you have to be careful as possible when you mix them together. You can't curve every surface, just like you can't have every surface straight. Okay, now over here, cylinder. Sometimes just using basic shapes can work quite well. Very, very good, yet strangely creepy BK. Okay, now I'm going to attach these. up. Bridge. Oh yes, it won't let me do two bridges at once. Max gets confused when you do that. Keep forgetting. Okay, control A, I'm going to cap those off. 
exit isolation mode. The reason I've done that is because it means I can now extrude this entire piece like so. Now you see where it's overlapping there. Looks messy. Bring it back just so it gets to about there. Okay, now I'm going to take this one and this one and just do a quick loop. Then I'm going to do a quick extrude. Helps sometimes if you write down your settings if you can't remember them. However, as I can't be bothered because it would require using a pen. I'm just going to wing it. It's a technical term, incidentally. There we go, we have two maker's marks drawn in. Like so. We're going to need to um, put in some smoothing groups soon as well. But we can do that sooner or later. We still haven't actually got any recognised way that, you know, projectiles fire at the end of this yet either, so we're going to have to work on that. Down here then. Um, let's have a look. Ah, yes. The School of Useless Design demands that we have something here, so I'm trying to get away from using too many exciting shapes at once, I might overstimulate myself. Ah, I attended the School of Soft Knocks. It's like the School of Hard Knocks, but it was for boys who couldn't take the punishment. soft knocks and mild chastising. Just trying to come up with a shape here that I think is going to be interesting. Yeah, I'll be stopping recording and going on to the next part in about eight minutes, Frank. Fred. There we go. Actually, you have to let us know. Do you prefer to be called Frederick or Fred? Okay, or just Budweiser. Should do. Okay, and um, we're going to extrude in. Chamfer. That gives us that shape there. Now down here. Too much curving going on really at the neck here for my liking, so... Now and again it's quite good fun to play with sub-D models, just not too much. It can lead to Gundam, and no one likes anything leading to Gundam. Sub-D, dangerous path to go down. There we go, a water bottle on the bottom, because all guns have water bottles on the bottom. Now we need to take this part here and turn it into a normal polygon. Sounds a bit of a strange thing to say, however, if you look at it at the moment, it most assuredly is not a normal polygon. Let's rotate this back 45 degrees again. We 
what I mean by that is I want this to be kind of square shaped which it isn't at the moment couple of ways of doing that, just going to grab here and here it's always fun doing this in real time because people are like my god does he really do it that way? why? Too much though, we'll end up with broken polygons. Bit too big. There we are. Make sure it's actually facing in the right direction here. I'm going to hinge from edge. Pick our hinge. 45 degree angle. One segment. There we are. And I'll just use bevel on this again. really trying to work with the shape a bit here you know it'd be nice if we saw old hero blob again I know he left after he had that unfortunate house fire but uh, everyone sees him tell him he should come back there we go. I could actually add an extra level of sub D to that if I wanted to, but it kind of overdoes it a bit. Although, mm, I don't know, quite like that. Nah, solid. Right. Goes there. these together. Oop, wrong one. There we are. Time for my half time orange. Haven't even got to the cabling yet. Terrible. Symmetry. I try and avoid using mirror as much as possible, simply because symmetry will do horrible things to your model and make you cry. However, this appears to be working on the local axis, which is no good to me. I should really have uh, reset selected first. Now I can do it. Probably. OK. 
Okay, and pull back. There we are. Okay, so starting to get somewhere, I think. And with that, I'm going to stop recording for a bit and see you in the next bit.